Welcome to this video. This is Matt from Funk to Trunk with my twin brother, Mike. Check out his channel, Your Driver Mike. We are going to go over the most commonly asked questions if you're thinking about getting a Tesla. So I've owned my Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus, which is now called the Rear Wheel Drive, for about five to six months now. And Mike is actually considering a Tesla. So if you're watching this and you're thinking about getting a Tesla, with all the price changes, we're gonna ask the big questions. Number one, is it still worth it? Well, I mean, I've seen your Tesla again for months now. Again, you have a white Model 3. Now, folks, I'm considering, well, it's funny you say considering because I've been looking at a Tesla like you for and really since they came out. So I'm looking at a Model Y Performance in red. And I mean, talking about the pricing in increases, we've seen some models go up $10,000 year over year, which is crazy. You know, you think about it and the Y Performance has gone up maybe, you know, two or three thousand dollars. So it's a lot of money, I mean, let alone for any performance model. So I like the aesthetic. I mean, the performance is nice, but I really like the aesthetic. Obviously, again, the performance is great. But I mean, as someone in folks, if you're thinking about a Tesla, it's unless you're a diehard, I feel like myself, like I'm going to get it almost regardless. But it gives you pause, especially if you're considering that model that, you know, it goes up like $10,000 right. year over year. Right, right. The price increases, you start to wonder, is it worth it? Is the features of what you're getting worth it? So let's just ask you as somebody who does not have a, an electric vehicle and the Tesla was my first electric vehicle, from being in the car and even driving my Model 3, I wanted you to test drive it. Yep. So how much different is it from a traditional ICE vehicle getting behind the wheel the, the design, the features, tell the audience about what your initial thoughts were. Sure, so I have a 2015 Volkswagen Passat, and the first thing that I, I commented on, it was a steering wheel, is I felt like the steering wheel, you know, for whatever reason, it felt smaller in my hand, but obviously it felt more comfortable. You know, there's a lot of soft touch materials on the Tesla, but I think like with the interior, with the self-driving, I mean, the first time that, you know, I experienced self-driving folks is, and I mean, hey, if you're looking at, you know, the uh, X or the Plaid with the yoke, a lot of these things are very new, but I mean, with the steering wheel, I got used to it, you know, within seconds, and I, I test drove your, your Model 3, but even with the center screen, it's the same kind of thing, and I think, you know, if there's any apprehension about, all right, Am I getting used to it? I found I got used to it pretty quickly. Right, uh, so there's a lot of changes from a traditional car, but let's talk about this. So with all of those changes, and you know, you, you're probably very excited about you know, the design and the acceleration, and you absolutely are more or less sold on it. And if you're not sold, I would definitely recommend a test drive. But what do you think about the prices right now? So again, the EV tax credit is very much up in the air. That's $7,500 plus a $500 battery bonus. Is it going to take an EV tax credit to get you or to get you to buy a Tesla? Are you comfortable with the current prices? Or let's say there's no tax credit. Will it take Tesla decreasing the prices? What do you think about the prices and how, how affordable it is? Is it, still, is it still doable? Well, I think for some people, I mean, it absolutely will be kind of a game changer for them. I mean, again, it's already kind of a premium vehicle, even the rear rear wheel drive. It's a pretty, right. it's 40 plus K, you know, and uh, the Y performance, I think we're looking at, you know, 68, that is a, it's a premium vehicle. So for those on the fence, you know, and folks, um, if you're really looking at taking advantage of that ER pending EV tax credit, if it doesn't happen, I think it will, you know, turn off some buyers. But I mean, there's been some conversation of, is that okay with Tesla? I mean, they have more than enough demand. Right. There was a, a big back order in most every make and model. Mm -hmm. And they've in parts, at least what we've discussed, they, they're increasing the pricing maybe to curb some of these orders because production is always an issue and it's just supply and demand. Right. right, absolutely. So here's another good question. So if are you willing, so let's say that you've thought about the price and it makes sense. So whatever the price happens to be in your head, I want to pay $600 a month or I'm, I'm comfortable with $800 a month. Whatever your budget is, we under your budget is completely um, your own. So let's say you've already decided I want a Tesla. How long are you willing to wait? Because remember, Giga Texas, the Austin, the new headquarters is kicking off the Model Y and the Cybertruck 
will be the priority vehicles. So we could see uh, deliveries happening sooner than later, but we might not on the same in the same breath. So how long are you willing to wait? How long do you think um, you know our audience might? You know, what 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 should they expect? Well, I mean, I think I mean obviously again, it's a it's a big purchase. So if you're looking at purchasing a Tesla, I mean, down payment is obviously a big thing, and then yeah, the lead time. So it, it depends. Do you, do you need it now? Like, I don't need it now, and actually, I don't even want it now. So for the Y performance, I'm actually waiting on the back order lead time to reach March of 2022. I mean, you look at the what standard version of the X, I believe it's in a 2023. Wow. And some of these models are into mid to late 2022 as it is. So, I mean, if you don't know, I mean, obviously these Teslas have a, a big lead time. You need to take that into consideration. You need to consider what's your capital, what are you going to put down for the down payments, and then again, when do you need the vehicle versus when do you kind of want the vehicle and work out with that. Yeah, that's a good point. We've talked about in our videos on Front to Trunk, and guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like this content that Mike is sharing his time with the channel, make sure to drop a like. But we've talked about the uh, things to keep in mind, right? The maintenance costs. Talk about how much maintenance uh, that you've seen, yeah. um, you know, on my car, on my Model 3, how much I've shelled out versus how much you've paid for your uh, Passat. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a huge contrast. And just so that you know, uh, and I'm going to share this with you guys, my total maintenance costs over 8,500 8, miles, almost 10,000 miles, approaching 10,000, uh, $25. So how does that compare to, to your Passat? Um, you know, are yeah. you, do, do you factor in the lower maintenance? Um, that's actually, I mean, it's, it's something that's definitely there. I've never really thought about it. I mean, I'm just thinking about, you know, again, capital, how much can I save? When can I save a down payment? And then, and then what the car payment is going to be. But I mean, absolutely. You know, I'm thinking about things like performance, the autonomous driving, the styling, of course, but yeah, the maintenance. You tend, you tend to forget to... almost how low the maintenance yeah. is. I mean, this is a really important factor because you're going to save on that charging cost. And like I just said, on the maintenance costs. Well, with the Passat, just to give you an idea, folks, is a standard oil change. Now, I go with the uh, synthetic. I mean, there's the standard, but I get the uh, synthetic oil change. It's about $100 you know, at the dealership. So if I'm going every whatever, now the synthetic, you can technically go a little bit longer between changes, but it's $100, you know, every what, you know, eight to 10,000 miles there. Yeah. Um, as far as other maintenance, I mean, thankfully, that's, uh, again, 2015 Volkswagen Passat. It's been very good as far as maintenance, having, not having it taken in too much. But to have what? No oil change. Well, there's been more maintenance. There's there's been, been more yeah, maintenance. well, just the general oil change as well and, and general upkeep. Of course, that you're not going to have that in the Tesla. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So we understand that. You know, that's a big plus. Now, we want to talk about knowing all of that. We've talked about your timelines, your budget. Um, is it worth it? Let's talk about what is the future of Tesla. So there's going to be more superchargers and companies like GM have committed to half EV sales by 2035 and 40,000 super, well, I'm sorry, 40,000 chargers GM is going to install next year. So the fact is there's going to be more places for you to charge your Tesla more superchargers. Now, we want to talk about what's next. If Tesla comes out with uh, the car like a Cybertruck or maybe a new battery, there's going to be a 4680 battery that has six times the power, much more range, and it's going to be cheaper. Do you wait until that 4680 battery? Do you wait maybe on a on a newer color or a new feature? Like what when yeah. when are you going to pull the trigger? Yeah, well, we were talking about that. You know, the kind of leaks releases out of I think Giga Berlin of the Deep Crimson of the Abyss Blue. I think there's a, a gray or silver yeah, variant. Silver. Yeah. Um, no, I like the red. You know, I'm going with the red. Um, again, it's a premium. They always you know there's little upcharges here and there, but that's that's what you got to do. But um, I like the red. Um, I, I now for me now, maybe you do love the deep crimson. Maybe that is something you, you want to wait until you can get a vehicle with deep crimson. It's the same kind of thing, right? The lead time wants and needs, um, uh, any other change? No, 4680. No, I mean, I, I'm fine with the range. I think it's in, it's in the three hundreds. I'm fine with that. Mm -hmm. Um, unless you're doing, you know, long haul driving, if this is going to be a vehicle you're driving across different states, then maybe you want, you know, the latest and greatest. But um, as far as, you know, how long I would keep the vehicle, I'm fine with, you know, the uh, the current battery and setup. Yeah, that makes sense too. How long are you planning on keeping this car? Because I've thought about trading in my uh, Model 3, not because I don't love it, but because the resale value is absolutely 
um, it's, it's through the roof right now. And I've gone on Carvana, I've gone on Vroom, I've gone on Tesla, and you get some really good bang for your buck as far as resale, so you can upgrade, if you will, to a Model Y or maybe a Cyber truck down the road. So any other final points that you would like to make as a potential buyer if you are thinking about getting a Tesla? Hopefully these are some of the most uh, frequently asked questions, but before we go, so hang on here, any final thoughts on what you would tell a prospective buyer? Yeah, well, like you, you know, I follow a lot of channels, uh, resources talking about the different vehicles, you know, the ID4 and these, the, the, the Rivian and, and, the Luc- the Tesla. and the Lucid. Well, you know, I, I commented to you, I think it was the Lucid, um, the Lucid Air, yep. uh, the Dream Edition, which was, you know, their most premium flagship vehicle, 130000 oh, it was actually maybe even more than that. I think it was more than the Plaid. Um, so for the price points, you know, again, I like the Y performance. I like the aesthetic. Obviously, the performance is great. Um, but it again, it comes down to your budget. I think with the I think most buyers and I think you, we've seen this on your channel when you've surveyed, you know, prospective buyers is you're looking at the three and the Y mainly. And I mean, do you want this space with the Y? Do you want maybe a little bit less performance just because of a higher stance at the Y. Uh, but again, you get more room, you get the hatchback, you get sure. cargo room there. Um, but as I would say, you know, if you're looking at buying a Tesla and you're on the fence, especially if you're going ice, you know, traditional uh, versus uh, electric, I don't think you can go wrong with a, a Tesla, whether it be the three or the Y um, and just making sure, again, you're in a good place to do it capital wise down payment mm-hmm. and then the payment terms. I totally agree. And most of you are interested in the Y and the three. So again, thank you so much for joining the channel and watching all of our coverage, my coverage of the Model 3 and Mike's input. So again, my name is Matt from Funk to Trunk. Thanks to Mike. Check out his channel channel your driver mike on youtube and we really thank you for your time make sure to uh, stay tuned and subscribe the only way i know you like this content is to drop a like so make sure to do that and we'll see you in the next video